Hey everybody, this is Mr. McKee again with Net226. Today I'm going to be going over Packet Tracer 5.4.13, which is Configure Extended IP version 4, ACLs Scenario 2. Alright, so looking on the right screen, we've got um, three PCs and a switch inside a um, LAN. Uh, RT1 is going from there out to the cloud, to the internet, with a um, connection probably to the ISP. All right, uh, CIDR 27 inside this network, and I'm assuming that's um, router to router connection with backslash 30. All right, looking at the addressing table, pretty standard stuff except for server 1 and server 2. They list their NIC address, but they don't list their subnet mask or their fault gateway. Okay. So, in this scenario, specific devices on the LAN are allowed to various, and I think that's supposed to mean are allowed to access various services on servers located on the internet. All right, so part one is con configure a named extended ACL. Configure one named ACL to implement the following policy. Block HTTP and HTTPS access from PC1 to server 1, server 2, and server 1 and server 2 are on the internet. All right, so... The servers are inside the cloud. That that that's weird term. That that's weird terminology. All right, and you only know their IP addresses. Okay. I guess well. Subnet mask. Anyways, we could find all that stuff. All right, block FTTP FTP access from PC two to server one and server two. Block. ICMP access from server 3 to server 1 and server 2. For scoring purposes, you must configure the statements in the order specified in the following steps. All right, there are a few questions in here that I um, I made a um, Word document that you can put that in that's attached to the um, submission link in Moodle if you're in my Net226 class. All right, so create an ex a named extended IP address list on router or RT1, which will deny PC1 access to the HTTP and HTTPS services on server 1 and server 2. Four access control statements are required. What is the command to begin the configuration of an extended access list with the named ACL? Begin the ACL configuration with the statement that denies access from PC1 to PC2. Okay, so there, that's our first question. All right, so let's go up here. And let's go to enable, configure terminal. All right, so the first command is gonna be IP access list extended. I would name it ACL, so ACL is the name of it. All right, and see right there, we're, we're making a named extended ACL, so that's it right there. All right. So that's our command. Begin the ACL, well, I've already done that. Refer to the address table for the IP address of PC1 and serve one. All right, so deny PC1, which is right there. TCP host that host to there. From host 64.101.255.254. Port 80 is HTTP. All right, next, enter the statement that denies access from PC1 to server 1 only for HTTP port 443. All right, so, so we can actually do this again and just do 443 on the end. Let's just make sure all that's right. All right. Okay. Enter the statement that denies access from PC1 to server 2. 
only for HTTP. So I guess that deny. So we can use all this stuff over 80 and then just change. So the only only difference is that second octet is a three. Instead of one oh one oh one it's one oh three. Alright. Up arrow again. Four four three for HTTPS. Let's see. Alright, so that's fine. Got that. So deny PC2, deny PC2, I guess deny PC2 access, deny PC2 to access FTP service one, server one, server two for the addressing table. Enter the statement that denies access from PC2 to server one only for FTP. Okay, so deny TCP host 72.31.1.102 host 64.101.255.254 equal to 21. Okay, and So that's 101, and the next one would be 103. Okay. Let's just make sure that's right. All right, so in deny. Deny PC3 to ping server 1 and server 2. Enter the command that denies ICMP access to PC1 to from PC1 to server 1. And you could just copy this too. Copy. All right, let's just make sure that's right. Okay. That. And then change the. Just change this out. All right. By default, an access list denies all traffic that does not match any rule in the list. Enter the command that, that permits all traffic that does not match any of the configured access list statements. So we're going to do permit permit IP any any. All right, see how our completion rate just jumped up from zero to eighty. So that's looking good. Okay. So verify the access list configuration before applying to an interface. Before any access list is applied, the configuration needs to be verified to make sure that are, there are no typographical, er, typographical errors and that the statements are in the correct order. To view the current configuration of the access list, use, the, use either the show access list or show running config command. All right, so let's do show, let's end, and then do a show access lists. Okay. So the first one is that one, that one. So server one, server two, and then 50 is server one, server two, FTP. All right, and then 70 is ICMP host. Server one and then server two and then ninety is permit IP any any. All right, and let's go up here and do a show show running config with a pipe begin access list.
Yeah, see that those are cool shortcuts that I've never used before. So begin at access list. So begin right there. There's the same info. Then you can go through the rest of the running config. That is pretty cool. All right. So note the difference between the output of the show access list command and the output of the show running config command is that the show access list command includes the sequence numbers assigned to the configuration statements. These sequence numbers enable the editing, deleting, and inserting of single lines within the access list configuration. Sequence numbers are also also define the processing order of individual access control statements. And starting with the lowest sequence number. All right, so apply and verify the, the extended ACL. The traffic to be filtered is coming from the 172.31.96 network and is destined, destined for remote networks. Appropriate ACL statements depend on the relationship between the traffic with respect to R1. In general, extended access lists should be placed on the interface closest to the source of the traffic. Uh, okay, so apply the ACL to the correct interface and in the correct direction. In an actual operational environment, an untested ACL should never be applied to an active interface. This is not good practice and can disrupt network operation. Yes, that is definitely true. All right, so on which interface should the named ACL be applied and in which, in which direction? All right, so it should be on the serial 000 interface. Or actually, wait a minute. I want to do deny host interface. Oh, you know what? Oh, so ne never mind. So we're blocking that closest to the the um, PCs that were filtering out the traffic. So it'd be gigabit zero zero. All right. So that answers that. Begin the ACL configuration with a statement that denies access to. Wait a second. This thing jumped up. All right. So we answered that. On which interface should the ACL be applied? In which direction? So gigabit zero zero in. All right. Enter the configuration commands to apply the ACL to the interface. So I'm going to do Control C. Um, configure terminal. All right. Interface gigabit zero zero, and I'm going to do IP access list group ACL in. All right, so that's set now. All right, test access to each PC. Access the websites of server one and server two using the web browser of PC one. Okay. So let's go to the web browser right there. Sixty four dot one oh one dot fifty five dot two fifty four. All right, can't access that one and one oh three. should time out also. Because we're we're blocking access from PC one at um server one server two. Okay. And 
And then now we, once we did that, we can go through here and look at our counters. Actually, let's do end and let's do show IP access lists. All right. We got denied there, 12 matches, and got denied here. Okay, so yeah, server one, server, server two. All right, so let's see what we got here. Oh, and what's funny too, if you go back and do this, PC1, if we do HTTPS, copy that, paste that in there. Now it's going to block on port 443. All right, and then change this to a three. And I clicked it twice, so I'll probably get more. My numbers will go up on server two higher than server one. All right, so let's go back here. Let's rerun that command. All right, well, actually, it hit it the same amount of time. There's deny port 443 which is HTTPS for server 1 and then server 3 or server 2 that's very confusing server 1 is 101 server 2 is 103 okay all right then we got to do all right so we see that access FTT access FTP of server 1 and server 2 using PC1 all right so let's test this thing out here, let's do FTP. Sixty four dot one oh one dot two fifty five dot two fifty four. All right, so we connected. What did it say the username was? Cisco. All right, so we're in there. And let's go to let's quit that. And let's do FTP 64.101.253.255.254. Oh, yeah, that's not going to work. All right, so we're in there now. Cisco. Cisco. All right. So that's fine. What else we got here? Then ping server one and server two. Let's quit out of that. Ping 64.101.255.254. All right, get responses back from that. And let's do a three. Our response is back from that. All right. And repeat step 2A and 2C with PC2 and PC3 uh, to verify proper access list configuration or operation. Okay. So PC2. Let's first go to the website. All right, so we can go to that website. We can go to I'm assuming that that's the same website. All right. We can go to S. Just w let's see if it times out. Let's do a fast forward time. All right, didn't time out. Let's go to 
HTTP paste. And we're supposed to be blocking FTP from PC2, so that shouldn't work. And three. All right, so it blocks that. Control C, let's do ping, paste. All right, so we can ping it. Let's ping three. Which is PC2. All right. And finally, PC3. Let's go to the web. I'm just going to go to one web server. All right, so that works. Let's go here. Let's do FTP paste. All right, Cisco. Cisco. All right, now quit. And we shouldn't be able to ping. Ping. Paste. All right, destination un destination host unreachable. All right, so everything works good, so we're good to go. All right, so make sure um, for this assignment you um, answer the questions listed. You don't really have to answer this. You don't really have to know that. There's a way you can figure that out, but you don't really have to do that. If you do a trace route to that, that might be – yeah, go ahead and answer that because you'll be like, you should be able to find that. All right, so you got a couple questions there, and then a copy of your completed .pka file, and then um, make sure you're showing that congratulations, your name, you've completed the activity, and there's not a lot of grading going on there anyways, but make sure you get 100. And that's it. Thanks for watching. That's the last video for this week, um, and I will see you guys next week.